We've been covering a lot of tags. We certainly haven't covered all of them. Um, but what happens when you have something that you don't have a tag for? Um, this happened a lot um, in the past with people that wanted to, for example, collect everything in the header and put it in one element. And so they used they they didn't have anything they could do. They had to use something called a div tag. That was used that was that happened so frequently that uh, HTML5 now has a header tag and a footer tag and an article tag. But what if you have something like this, a section called quotes? You can't just make up tags. It's not allowed. You can't just say I want to call this section quotes and even though it doesn't exist, I'm going to just make up my own tag. You can do that in XML. You can't do that in HTML. So we can't make up our own tags. What we can use is something that's a little bit like the um, blank tag, the blank tile in if you play Scrabble at all. Uh, a tile that is basically blank, that doesn't do anything except hold a place. So this is the div tag, um, and the div tag defines a block of things. Uh, now, if I it's useless, right? It doesn't actually do anything. When I display this, if I save it, uh, file save, and then I go over here and refresh it, you're not actually going to see any difference at all. It's exactly as it was before. So why would you even bother to do this? Well, um, in CSS, for example, you could address this div tag, um, or using JavaScript you could address it. So it's a way to be able to select parts of the page. Now to do that, you probably don't want to just do div, because you might have, in a, in, a in a common page, you might have dozens or even hundreds of divs on the same page. And so you need to be able to have a way to identify them. And one way to do it is kind of associate keywords with them, um, and you do that by, by giving them class. So uh, the div has a, a class, which is kind of like a keyword associated with it, and that's where we can call it quotes. So now we have quotes, and we know where it is, and we can get to it. You'll find out later on in CSS um, and in JavaScript, you can select this section by saying, I want to select the section that is listed as quotes. All right. Um, one of the nice things about classes, you can have multiple classes or multiple keywords associated with it. So we could have quotes and chunks. I don't know why we would call something chunks, but we can just have a space between um, the various classes that we're calling things. Um, actually, content management systems like WordPress do this a lot. Um, so, uh, so this is a, a div right here that's for a post. And it's, it has a number of classes associated with it. It has H entry, it has the author, it has like maybe a dozen various classes associated with it. And why would you do this? Well, because if you're a, um, if you're a designer, then you can say, for example, on my blog, that anything that has tag video actually gets displayed differently than other kinds of posts. So it's a great way to kind of get a handle on things. So lots of content management sy systems will give you multiple classes for various divs on the page. Class can also be used um, in any tag. It's an attribute that can work anywhere. So it doesn't just have to work on, uh, on uh, a div. Uh, so class can go anywhere. I'll note that divs are actually a, a block level um, tag or, or element. So we haven't talked about blocks and, and inline, but we will here. Um, the equivalent is span for inline. Inline is stuff that happens inside of a block. So you could think of it as things that work inside of, say, uh, a, a paragraph, things that don't make you go to a new line when it's being displayed, um, for example. We'll call this class equals animal. So you could, if you're doing something and you don't want it to kind of create a new line by default, um, you can use a span. However, you can change that <laughs> in, in CSS. So frankly, I very rarely use spans. You can use divs just as easily. Um, I'm just mentioning it so that you've seen it and so you won't be freaked out if you see a span. The other thing you'll see a bit of is something called an ID, which is very much like a class. Um, uh, let's call it uh, what people's, oops, it has to be what people say. The difference between ID and class is that an ID can only be used once on each page. So it must be unique to just one element. Class, you can use class 
chunks there, chunks there, chunks everywhere. You can use class multiple times. But ID means this is the one element with this ID. It's kind of like an, a, a name that can only work for one person, a social security number or something like that. All right. Thanks.